Hi guys, Niall here. Welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Today we're going to talk about how you can create and model a structural composite slab floor in Revit, complete with a profiled metal deck, as you can see in the example here. The video contents are going to consist of generating your profile from scratch, your profile family from scratch, using a CAD detail as a base, and then bringing that into our live project to develop the actual floor itself, the slab, the composite slab itself, complete with the deck to the underside of it. And then finally, a little to known tip that people um, don't realize is present in the floor um, modeling functions on how to control cantilevers so that your steel and your concrete can actually have different extents on the boundary conditions. So without further ado, give me one moment and I'll be back to you and we'll get started. So the first thing we need to do is generate our structural profile family that will represent the Comfloor 60 profile that we'll be using as the structural deck within our composite floor system. So in order to do that, uh, we go to File or the big Revit button, depending on what way you have it set up. And on the drop down then, we're going to go to New Family. And I'm using the UK metric library, you may be using a different library, um, but for the most part, they should be similar to this. And what we're going to do is select metric profile. Now that we're in our metric profile family, what we need to do is actually generate our proposed deck profile. And we need to generate one segment that we know is going to repeat consistently down this section of the floor. So the way we actually create the profile lines themselves is via the line tool here. And there's two ways that you can do this. You can do this if you want to create a generic profile that you you know yourself, you could merely draft it in. So you could do something akin to this. And what you'd have there is a very, very basic profile deck. So let's say you're not sure what type of deck you're going to specify in the early project stages, but you still want to represent something for provisional details, let's say at a pricing stage. You could quickly draft in something similar to what I have here and save as, name it whatever profile deck you want and use it in your ever profile for your composite floor systems. But in this instance, we're going to show you a preferred method. and. What I like to do is typically manufacturers have CAD details available. They still haven't caught up with um, Revit families, but they normally have CAD details available. So what I normally do is I go and find the manufacturer specific profile that I'm after. And I use that within the family as the basis that we draft over. So in order to do that, we go to our insert tab, import CAD, and then we navigate to the floor profile that we've derived from the manufacturer in CAD for. Okay, I'm gonna put it in current view only. Colors I'm gonna preserve, positioning. I'm not gonna worry too much about that for the moment. Correct lines, everything else is okay. Import units, auto detect. Now, you can see that our COM 60 profiles are just snapping over here, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this element here. I'm gonna select the midpoint of the repeating detail as they've shown us and I'm going to put it at the midpoint of the intersection apologies I forgot to unpin it I'm going to migrate it to the intersection of the reference planes here so we know where the center of it is now going again to create the actual lines for the family we go into our line tool and now we can select pick lines but the first thing we want to do is under subcategory we want to change in the family profiles, apologies, we want to change the profile usage to slab metal deck. And that's telling the family that this is going to be a slab metal deck profile and not some other profile variant throughout the project, okay? So then we're gonna to go to our create tool, we're gonna to press line, and we're gonna press the pick line tools here, okay? And when we highlight just one line segment of the CAD file, we can press tab and you can see that nearly the entire thing is selected in a chain, okay? So I'm gonna select that. I'm 
And what that's doing there is that's generating our lines over the CAD data. Now, what you'll see here is there was some sort of missing connection between the CAD drawing here. So again, I'm going to go to create. I'm going to go to line. I'm going to use the pick lines, but then I'm just going to pick the single lines in isolation here. And I missed one of them there, which I thought I did. So line again, pick lines. Now, this is as straightforward as it is to create the Confloor profile deck family. Okay, so now I can go into this isn't a link. In fact, it's a it's a it's a an import. So I can select the CAD data and I can merely delete it away. And what we're left with is our repeating Confloor data. So this is the Confloor 60. So what we're going to do is we're going to go say File, Save As, Family. We're going to designate a location. I'm just going to leave it on the desktop for the moment. And I'm going to call it Confloor 60 Profile. And Save. And now I'm going to load it into the project. And it's loaded into the open project that I had in the background. Okay. You can also bring your family into the Revit environment, into your project environment, by going to your insert tab and load family and navigate to wherever you have saved out your new profile. So now that we've generated our profile, what we need to do is actually generate the structural floor slab so that we can append the profile to the underside of it. So in this model here, if I turn off the section box temporarily, you see that we actually have a portal frame design, but we have a mezzanine internally at kind of the halfway height level. And what I want to do is I want to actually put the composite slab across this level here. Okay, So we're going to migrate to the view associated to that, and the plan view associated to that is mezzanine top of steel. And we're going to go to our structural tab. We're going to select floor, structural, and we're going to draw our boundary. So I'm not going to be too pushed about the boundary for the moment. I'm merely going to click and drag like that for the moment, okay? And then I'm just going to bring out some of the snaps to the extremities of the steel. Now, bearing in mind, if you have more time yourself, you, you'll be going in and out around your columns, depending on what your details are. So, this is the boundary for our floor, okay? And you can see that because we're at our mezzanine top of steel level on the right-hand side in the project browser, the level that the floor is all automatically being generated at is the mezzanine top of steel level, okay? The floor at the moment is called generic 300 mil. You can see that we have previous examples present in this model, but I'm not gonna use those for this instance. I'm gonna go with the generic, okay? So we've got a generic 300 mil floor and we have a top of steel TOS, okay? The mezzanine top of steel. So what I actually want in total is a 150 mil deep slab on a comp floor 60. So I'm going to set my offset for the top of the slab to be the mezzanine top steel level plus 150 mil to account for the full depth of the buildup of our composite deck. Now that we have designated some of the properties to start with, what we need to do is ensure our span direction is moving in the right way. Okay, so using this tool here, the span direction, we can pick a boundary. And our floor will span parallel to the boundary that we select for the span direction, okay? So the previous iteration was correct because we have the short span of the beams in this direction. I want to set the floor to span across the short distances of the beams. So our floor is going to span left to right now. So we're going to finish the edit mode on the floor. And we've generated a structural floor slab to begin. But this is without... The presence of the structural deck and it's incorrectly sized at the moment its depth is too great so snapping back to the 3d view you'll see that we're actually going down into the depth of our members which we don't want so we're going to select our generic floor again we're going to press edit type and we're going to duplicate and we're going to call it 150 mil composite apologies composite slab on floor 60 deck okay 
And now we're going to go under construction to the edit tools. And you're going to see that we have structure here as the only um as the as the only material item assembly item within the actual uh, structure of the floor so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to designate a concrete for our build-up so i'm going to say concrete cast in place and i'm going to set the thickness of that to 150 mil okay so now we have 150 mil total build-up okay but what we also want to do is insert another assembly item. So I want to insert, okay? And you can see that's automatically went above. So I'm going to move my new inserted item below the concrete because we want the concrete to be to the top and the deck to be on the bottom, okay? Then under the structure drop down, we're going to drop down to structural deck and you'll see that we are prompted here with the various COM floor variations and you start to see the repeating profile present in the preview once it's opened, okay? So I'm going to scroll down and you can see that we have multiple comp floor variants here. We have the chorus comp floor and we've got the roof decks and, and so on. Okay. We have a standalone deck or bound by the layer above. If you are, are leaving the material uh, present, then you want to leave bound by layer above. Okay. So in this instance, we're going to scroll down. We're going to select comp floor 70 and we're going to press the material and we can select whatever we want here so in this instance i'm going to say calf no nope. i'll just put in steel and see what we have here okay i'm not going to get too concerned about that for the moment i'm just going to use this steel for the moment okay and um, ideally you're going to use a galvanized steel and now that we have done all of that, we can press OK. And yet again, all of the rest of this information is OK. It's an and we don't need any additional. So I can press OK. And now you'll see that w the floor depth has decreased. So obviously, we're still going through our columns where we haven't cut out the, the floor direction from the columns. But generally, you can see that the floor depth is correct. So when I go back to the mezzanine top of steel level and I generate a section, through you can now see that because we've generated a section across the span direction you can now see each and every member of the profile repeat so we only have a profile that has two sides down a center line but you can see it repeating across the entire deck okay there's another thing that is worth noting and I'm going to come back to you in a moment to show you how it functions. But basically, you can control the cantilever and the offsets from the steel from the boundaries in the tool set. Okay, so I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to come back to you in just a moment on that. Okay, guys, I'm back with you. And you can see here that I've went back into the plan view and I've created this little section mark here. Okay, and on the right hand side, you can see how that section is interfacing um, with the geometry adjacent, okay? So what you're seeing here is the slab expanding onto the very, very outer edge of the beam, okay? And what we actually have is we have a void between the slab and the inside face of the cladding rail that we want to infill. But we also don't want our structural deck to carry out as far as the cantilever. Actually, what we want to do is we want to reduce it so it's landing just centrally on the grid line. So what we have here is, I can see on top, I've got the dimensions on top here, that we need to control the cantilever on the boundary with. So how do we extend the concrete in isolation, but actually retract how far the structural deck protrudes, uh, is, is, has extruded down the length of the, 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 composite, de the composite slab? And... There is a tool that's now built into the structural floor system. Okay, so when you select it in plan, you can press edit boundary. And when you select the boundary line that you want, okay, what you'll see is there's actually up just underneath the top toolbar, there's a new tool set that pops up and it gives you offset values, a defined slope, but more importantly, it has cantilevers. 
and it has a concrete cantilever and it has a steel cantilever. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate these values so that they report to match the dimensions that we have here. And what you'll see is that our steel should trace back to join the grid line and our concrete should extend out to the back face of our cladding res. So I'm going to change that value to 158 and I'm going to change that value to minus 77. Now I may have the, the plus and the minuses backwards here, I'm not sure, okay? But I'm going to press OK there. And you can see that I actually input it incorrectly, all right? And the reason I input it incorrectly is it actually matters which part of the building this section is cut through. So because we're on the left hand side, those values should have been reversed. So if I control Z, if I go back here, sorry, into the plan view, edit boundary, and I select that boundary again, and I put the minus in front of the concrete and leave the steel as a plus value. Press OK. Now you'll see that we have a concrete cantilever that extends independently of the structural deck. That the structural deck is traced back from the edge of the beam it was resting on to the midpoint of the beam and that our concrete for the overall slab has carried out in the cantilever independently. So that's just a tip that very few people are aware of within the structural flooring systems in Revit. So that pretty much concludes the tutorial on how to create a composite floor system inclusive of a structural deck within Revit. Uh, if you have any questions on this at all, please let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe as always. If there's anything that is absent from this tutorial that you'd like to go through in a little bit more detail, by all means, let me know and we can run through it. Um, just one closing note for you to be aware of. You cannot present the profile in 3D view in Revit as a default. So it doesn't matter that you have the profile present in the model. It's too demanding on the, uh, the it's too graphically demanding on the program to render the profile repeating underneath a whole slab. So as a default, it doesn't allow you to do that. So if you need this method to produce 3D renderings to the underside of the slab for any reason at all, it's not sufficient. What you're going to have to use is something like a fascia profile hack or something like that, that you that you array down the underside of the slab and it carries through. So that's just another thing to be aware of before you finished. Um, but other than that, I think we're all set here and done. Um, as always, uh, thank you for checking out the 1820 BIM channel and we'll talk to you again. Thanks. Take care. Bye bye.